Welcome to Stowbutter's Elite TFO Training, featuring Infected Space Elite. Let's start with objectives. First, destroy the initial Borg fleet in under 90 seconds. This is mandatory on Elite. Second, destroy all nanite generators and transformers on either side of the gateway, with the optional objective to prevent any nanite probes from repairing the transformers. Lastly, destroy the gateway and Borg cube to complete the TFO. This mission must be completed in under 15 minutes. Thank you. On to risks and rewards. This TFO requires moderate coordination to play well on Elite, with all optionals, and without team deaths. It is possible to complete in a public group, but usually a tank is needed for a deathless run. The enemy threat level is moderately high, as Borg drain shields and deal a decent amount of damage, and there are many Borg ships. In particular, the gateway fight can be a test of your survivability. For rewards, this TFO awards a moderate amount of Omega or Fleet Marks, along with a chance of Enchained Current Pieces. Lastly, this operation can be very short with a well-built team composition at under 2 minutes, which is one of the reasons that this TFO is used for DPS benchmark testing. The adversaries on this operation are Borg. Borg vessels, at the Sphere rank and higher, have a powerful shield drain ability, so encounters with them need to account for a low shield uptime. If flown properly, there will be nearly 20 Borg vessels and two Dreadnought class enemies in a single location once the second Transformer is destroyed, so a high volume of damage should be expected at the Gateway fight. For this operation, we will speak broadly for general completion, as well as some tactics for achieving higher DPS on benchmark runs. Very high-end specific strategies are not covered here and would deserve their own video. If you are coordinating with a team for DPS runs, you will want to have a tank. If your primary DPS is above 300k without support, a dedicated support build would also help boost the primary DPS. If you are bringing one support, that ship should have Gravity Well 3 to pull all spheres and probes onto the gateway at that segment of the TFO. We call this the anchor support. If the team has more than one support, then it's better to have a commander tactical ship for the second support for providing abilities like Attack Pattern Beta 3. We call this a spotter support. Regardless, if your team's DPS is above 600k for the primary player, then that player should probably be the only DPS player. If you're below 600k, it might be advisable to have two or even three DPS players. This will likely be the case on more casual or unorganized runs. Regardless of chasing DPS or not, this TFO has four fights. The first encounter, left transformer, right transformer, and then the gate and cube. Teams should generally move in that order unless coordinated otherwise. Because the team is heading to the left transformer first, attack the central cube, then the right assimilator, then the left assimilator to ensure you're in optimal position to move to the left transformer as quickly as possible once the last ship goes down. Avoid pulling nanite probes onto the transformers if possible. Large gravity wells with high control expertise or other pull effects should be reserved for the first fight and the gateway to avoid attracting the probes and spheres from the gateway while fighting at the transformers. Once the first transformer is down, move as quickly as possible to the right transformer. Fighting in the middle instead of bypassing the ships there is a mistake, especially if pursuing higher DPS as it leads to longer combat time. Flanking positions for the transformers and gateways are not intuitive. At the start of the map, your ship is already at the flanking angle for all the Borg structures. Do not move to what is the, considered the back of the structure from your starting position's perspective in an attempt to flank it. Now, combat footage will be shown to illustrate the principles discussed previously. The goal of this section is not to illustrate perfect piloting, but provide an example of how to successfully complete the map with all objectives and without dying. Exotic builds are well suited to this map, though the highest end DPS chasers for this type prefer Hive Onslaught instead due to higher enemy hit points and a concentration of enemies in the opening fight. Note that in this video, the previous version of this map with cubes instead of assimilators is shown and a tactical cube at the end. For all practical purposes, this was a cosmetic change only and has no bearing on the tactics. If you are using restorative particle focusers, you will want to pre-charge them with heals before the mission begins. In the initial fight, target the central cube, then the right assimilator, then the left one, using your gravity well on the central cube. Most of your anomalies and console actives should be used here as well. If you are using the micro dark matter anomaly, avoid using it here as it has a severe penalty against shielded targets unless you can rely on your team to bring the shields down reliably. 
Leaving when the last target is at 10% health or lower but not quite destroyed is ideal as your damage over time abilities should finish it while you transition to the next stage. Once the initial fleet is destroyed, activate a speed boost like evasive maneuvers and fly to the left transformer. As you approach, target and inflict some damage on the assimilator above the transformer, then switch to the transformer itself. You will want to position directly in front of it between 2 and 4 kilometers away. Too close and you risk destroying yourself with destructible high yield torpedoes provided by concentrated firepower. If you're too far, you won't be able to use certain point blank area of effect abilities. Once the transformer and assimilator are destroyed, immediately move as fast as possible to the right side and repeat, using any speed boosts available to make the transition faster. Leave any probes or spheres behind and ignore the ones in the middle. Position similarly on the right transformer, attacking the assimilator first, then switching to the transformer until both are destroyed. Once all structures and the assimilator on the right side are destroyed, turn and engage the gateway, using any speed boosts available to approach it faster. At the gateway, use quantum singularity manipulation to dramatically increase your science stats and apply your second gravity well, along with every ability in your arsenal. This should pull all the probes and spheres into a single concentrated area, which is ideal for exotic damage. Once the gateway is destroyed, turn and engage the cube at the end. If you are in a scout ship, you can flank it by turning 180 degrees from the gateway's flank angle or backwards from your starting orientation on the map. If the team properly accepts the map of any other probes, spheres, or generators, the mission should complete once the cube is destroyed. Your maximum strength gravity well at the gateway will go a long way to ensuring that the run is clean and ends when the cube is destroyed. Captain, if this breakdown helped you in your quest to play Stow better, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. The link to the specific build used for this tutorial is in the description. For more guides and builds, check us out at www.stobetter.com.